Okay, let's say that I did a poll of students in my class, and just for sake of making this a little easy, I'm going to say I have 100, 100. So if you look at the top, you'll see that I have um, 52 plus 27, that would be how many in finance, marketing, um, plus 48 mil, 73. But if you notice here, I'm gonna say that I have, if I add that, 100 males and 100 females. So in other words, 200 total. And so in other words, I pulled the class and I said, I got all the boys, the men together. And I said, how many of you are studying finance? And 52 said, I am. And I asked the females, 27 said finance. So that would be what, 79? I'm trying to add that way. And then I came back and I said, I asked the guys, I said, well, how many of you are in uh, marketing and how many of you are in female are in marketing? And I get 48 plus 73, gonna put that in my calculator right there. You know, go cheat like you guys do. And I get 121. And I see if I add this column, nine plus one is 10. Okay, one, nine, 10. So, so I need to make sure my columns and my rows add up to 200. So typically this is how you start with data. You just go out and you survey the number of people in the class, um, the guys that are finance majors, the girls that are f finance majors, the guys that are marketing majors, and then the girls that are uh, marketing majors. All right, so then when you do a marginal probability table, you're doing the same, your table looks the same as far as male, female, and then what, finance, finance, and marketing. All right, and we'll still have our totals here. And so now when I want to do a marginal probability probability matrix what I'm doing is I'm finding the joint probabilities so in other words this first one is the probability that they're male and in finance well if I look up here that would be 52 out of 200 total so I put 52 out of 200 total in my calculator and I get 0.26 if I want to know the probability that they're female and their finance, that would be 27 out of 200. And I get, so let me write it, 27 out of the total number. I get 0 0.135. And so I can add 0 0.26 plus 135, and I get 0 0.395. Now, if I wanted, I could check and say, well, this is the same as 79 out of 200, right? So it's the same thing, <clears throat> all right? But it's also adding that row. Do the next one, which is 48 out of 200. So 48 out of 200, which is 0 0.24. Uh, the next one would be 73 out of 200. So 73 out of 200, which would be 0 0.365. 365. And then I add those that row and I get 0 0.605. Once again, I could check it by taking 121 out of 200. So the key kind of here is that you understand what each of these values look like in probability terms. So these values within the table, I'm drawing and nothing's happening. These values within the table are the intersections. So in other words, this would be, what's the probability they're finance and they're male? What, ooh, I got two Fs, that ain't good, huh? <laughs> What's the probability they're finance and they're female? We'll do that for iron, right? And then this, of course, would be what's the probability that they're market? Ooh, I got MMs too. <laughs> Marketing and they're male. So we'll do my. And then the probability that they're marketing 
and they're female. So those are the, those are the um, we call these once again the joint probabilities. What happened? <laughs> are the intersections? That was freaked me out. Okay, so those are my joint prob. Why you keep doing that? I don't know. All right, and then these values here at the end. Oh, I know why it's doing it. I lost my 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 pen. These values here at the end now are, this would just be the probability finance. This would be the probability marketing. And then if I added my total here, which I ain't got a lot of room, but I'm do 0 0.26, 0 0.24, and I get 0 0.5, you know what I guess? I would guess 0 0.1, 0 0.35, point, how in the world did I get this perfect? and 0 0.5 and then of course if you add this column or this row all probabilities should add to one so then these would be the probability of a male let's put ma and then this would be the probability of a female so i could just look at this table and say what's the, if i have a class of 200 students and i had this information what's the probability that i'm going to get a finance they're going to be a finance major and they're a female and that would be that value there all right so now if i wanted to actually figure out my conditional probabilities and that's a different table so my conditional probabilities are based off of, if you remember the formula, so I'm gonna kinda of jump back and forth so it might be a little crazy, it might get, might get crazy. So if you remember the conditional probabilities, like in other words, if I wanted the probability that they're a finance major given that they're a male, we said that's the probability that they're finance and male over the probability that they're male. All right, so if we go back, we can find the finance and male right here, right chair, right chair, 0 0.26, okay, finance and male, and then the probability that they're a male, 0 0.5, so it'd be 0 0.26 over 0 0.5, get my pen back, 0 0.26 over 0 0.5, 0 0.26 divided by 0 0.5, and that gives me 0 0.52, all right? So we can find conditional probabilities based off of these marginal probability matrix table. However, if you wanted to create your own conditional probability, because that's what this is, a condition says the probability something happened given something else happened then you could do that let me write these numbers down so you should you should be following along with me you're following along with me right so 0 0.135 0 0.365 and then 0 0.5 and then my 0 0.395 0 0.605 okay so now if i want to do a um, conditional probability table then what i can do is i can do my same thing so i had male female i had finance and i i had marketing and now these values in here because this is going to be a conditional so this is a conditional, conditional, I am a math major, I cannot spell. Uh, this is my conditional probability matrix, so probability matrix. These values inside here now are those values. So I can already see how to get the first one, but if I look back at the table, what I'm doing, I'm taking this joint probability and I'm dividing it by this value. Well, if you notice, that's what I'm doing in my formula. I'm taking my joint probability beside, divided by that probability of male. So if I do these, la 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 la. So in other words, this piece right here would be 0 0.26 divided by 0 0.5. We've done that one already. If you go back to that other table, this value was 0 0.24 and I'm going to divide 0 
five. So divided by 0.5 and I get 0 0.48, which I should because this total should add to one and it does. So now if I look at the female, if you go back, the intersection was 0 0.135 and then the probability of a female was 0 0.5. So 0 0.135 divided by 0 0.5, I get 0 0.27. And this one was what, 0 0.365 divided by 0 0.5. So 0 0.365 divided by 0 0.5, and I should get 0.73. How do I know that? Because these should equal one. These values here stay the same. So this was the 0 0.395 and the 0 0.605. And of course, those add to one. So it's important to note that the difference now in here, these are, these are my conditional probabilities. So in other words, I could look at this one and I can say, well, this means the probability that they're marketing given that they're a male. How do I know that? Because that's the intersection of marketing male so that's the intersection of marketing male and male and then divided by that is the probability that they're male like i mentioned in class you don't really see too many people do these conditional probability matrix because you can get all that information off of the marginal probability matrix all right, so at least I know that's something you can pause and go through, and I try to actually work this um, with me as you see me working it so you can understand the difference between the two, uh, marginal versus our conditional.